That that actually leads us into the AAC. Let's talk about that. Cincy 35, yeah. Houston 20, and, uh, you know, it, not super surprising here. Big note on this uh, postgame win expectancy, by the way. Cincy 100%. Cincinnati was 0 of 8 on third down. 0 of 8. Now, well, the other... They only had 8 third downs. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. They only had 8 that's third downs. That's what I hear when you say that. You hear... A lot, of, a lot of people hear that. I'm looking at the 8 thinking, you just played a 60-minute football game against a really good opponent, and you only had 8 third downs. Yes. Yes. Cincinnati pretty, only pretty ran... Good. at Since he only ran 45 plays, uh, Jeff Fogle went through all the different numbers on this. They won yards per play 8.9 to 4.6. They rushed 210 to 86 yards. They won drive points 28 to 14. That's 60-plus yard drives, which is easy to do when you've got a 79-yard run, a 45-yard touchdown run, uh, a 40-something yard. Pa- like he, They hit explosive plays like it was going out of style. Houston has a pretty good defensive line, but they were able to negate that. They're very aggressive, and they just attacked them. Like when when so Houston is a really to... good football team, man. Luke Fickle has that machine rolling. This is the best game Desmond has played, maybe not all year, but pretty much all year. I I think I mean he was he was good. Uh, he was eleven I, out of seventeen think... for one hundred ninety yards and three touchdowns. Like it, it's but not when a... he had to make when he had to make throws, man. He made some he made oh, he, some dynamite throws. He certainly this did. I'm, like he like when you're killing a team like that. Yeah, you just keep bludgeoning them to death. But when he wanted to take the top off the defense and he wanted to make a throw, he was able to make it all day. Yeah. Jerome Ford, 18 attempts for 187 yards and two touchdowns. Ford was Um, unbelievable. Getting him back is so big. We talked about how so many people criticize Cincinnati for losing these close games. What do you think these other teams would do if they lost their best offensive skill weapon in the middle of the season? For like a four game stretch, yeah. Alabama was already playing close games, barely beating people. Like like Michigan was still in dog fights. All these other teams were still in dog fights with other teams. Take away their best offensive skill player, and they lose a lot of those games. The fact that since they didn't lose any of those games, and then when they get him back, what that machine looks like, they look like before they lost him. This is this is why this is why they were holding them back because they weren't beating people bad enough, which is so dumb to me. Yeah, no, I, I and I think obviously it played itself out the way that we discussed because they will be in the top four, uh, well, which no, the show is starting in in five minutes. So I've I've got it pulled up. We'll talk about it when it goes live. But yeah, it, looking at this, like they they got to be able to sustain drives going forward, whether it's against Alabama or whoever they end up playing. But they they got the skill players, they got the athletes, and on defense, Gary Lewis jumped in. Or Casey Sauce uh, Sauce Gardner, number one cornerback in college football, yeah, maybe so. Uh, and Gary Lewis, by the way, jumped in and said, "Look at Oklahoma State without the running back Warren. Yeah, without Jalen Warren, yeah, that offense could not get it going. Yeah. This is this is what happens. Everybody else loses their best skill player, and and they fall mightily. Cincinnati struggled. They were in dog fights. They didn't lose any of them. The yeah. defense stepped up. Other guys stepped up. That offensive line stepped up big." I, I there there there's a reason they're in the top four. They deserve to be in the conversation with Michigan, who I think is one of the most complete teams I've seen in a long time. Wham with Alabama and Georgia, who we all have watched and seen and believe is, is are, are complete football teams. Like they yeah. deserve to be in this. This is not the little guys finally getting a chance. No, no one's giving them a chance. They have earned this, they've taken it, they've They've ripped it away from people who don't want to give it to them. Cincinnati, by the way, only ran 45 plays to 73 for Houston since he had eight sacks. They did not turn the ball over, and Cincinnati was able to put up the 35 points there and 400 yards of total offense yep. in only 19 minutes and 41 seconds time of possession. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the defense was on the field for a long time, and they didn't get tired. That's Scary. Yes. Like, well, they like got if you're one of these other three teams that got to play them, you got to look and say, am I going to be the Power 5 team that loses to the little school? Because that defense beat on the field. I thought I, the reason I liked Houston in this game was simply I thought the back door was left open 10 and a half and ended up closing it like 11 and a half. I thought the back door is going to be open for this cover. And that's, that's what scary. I And it was. It and, was. And, and, and with Cincinnati's defense being on the field, the entire game, three full quarters worth of Cincinnati's defense being on the field almost, I, I thought I, it's only time before Houston makes a play to get, get something in the end zone to get the back door in. 
and they couldn't do it. Cincinnati's yeah. defense didn't get tired. They didn't look exhausted. And at the end of the game, they were still blitzing and getting to the quarterback and getting tackles in the backfield and pressure on the uh, on the offense like they were in the first half. A lot that of people, was impressive. A lot of that people in Nippert were, were very impressed with the atmosphere, said it was the loudest they've ever heard it. That third quarter run that they had where they scored three touchdowns at just back to back to back, uh, yeah. that was the backbreaker for Houston. You know, this is why we have to get to 12, and this is why first round games have to be played on home field events. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally this with is, that. When they expand, you saw it's got to be. Cincinnati did. Now, now the, the atmosphere in Atlanta, but you have two monster schools, two monster fan bases. The atmosphere in Jerry World was unbelievable. The atmosphere in, in Indianapolis, you've got Michigan who hasn't made it in forever. And so every Michigan fan alive is fighting to get tickets to that game. Like, yes, you had great atmospheres, but put those games on the home field advantage, and it's a different It's a whole world. different ballgame. It's oh a whole different ball. Gosh, game. is it different? I I don't know that Baylor wins that game if it's in if it's at Oklahoma State. Oh, I agree. I agree one hundred percent. If it's in Stillwater, Baylor's not taking that game. That's a different outcome. It is home field mattered this year. Like you can look at numbers and say that it didn't and whatnot, but like in big games, in big games, it home did. home team won. It's it's yeah. anecdotal. Yeah, but but in big moments and big games, yeah, it was important. Now you have certainly got that right. Gary Lewis, Chris B, about on-campus first-round CFP games? Yes. Yes. Yeah, 100%. When I, 100%. When I saw the Cincinnati game, and what the hell, uh, last year, was it last year? Two years ago, sorry. I went to the Memphis-Cincinnati game here in Memphis. It was, it was unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And that's little old Memphis. You got that right. You got that right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.